Behold the faithful and prudent steward whom the Lord set over his household. In nomine Patris et Filii Spiritus Sancti, Gracia Domini Nostri Jesu Christi Caritas Dei Communicatio Sancti Spiritus, sit com omnibus vobis. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. <coughs> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that by St. Joseph's intercession, your church may constantly watch over the unfolding of the mysteries of human salvation, whose, belong, whose beginnings you entrusted to his faithful care through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go tell my servant David, when your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne forever. I will be a father to him, and he will be a son to me. And your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. Verbum Domini. The son of David will live forever. The son of David will live forever. Promises of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations my mouth shall proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. The son of David will live forever. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn to David my servant. Forever will I confirm your posterity and establish your throne for all generations. The son of David will live forever. He shall say of me, you are my father, my God, my rock, my savior. Forever I will maintain my kindness toward him and my covenant with him stands firm. The son of David will live forever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brethren, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through his righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith, so it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made your father of many nations. He is our Father in the sight of God in whom we believe, who gives life to, death, to the dead and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the Father of many nations, accordingly, according to what was said, Thus shall your descendants be. That is why it was credited to him as righteousness. Verbum Domini Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
Blessed are those who dwell in your house, O Lord. They never cease to praise you. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dominus Rabiscum, Lexio Sancte Evangelii Segundum Lucum. Each year Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Feast of Passover. When he was 12 years old, he, they went up according to the festive custom. After they completed its days as they were returned, the boy Jesus remained behind in Jerusalem, but his parents did not know it. Thinking that he was in the caravan, they journeyed for a day and looking for him among their relatives and acquaintances, but not finding him, they returned to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the, uh, of the, of the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions, and all who heard him were astounded at, at, at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished, and his mother said to him, Son, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been looking for you with great anxiety. And he said to them, Why are you looking for me? Did you not know I must be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he said to them. He went down with them and came to, Jer uh, to Nazareth and was obedient to them. Verbum Domini. Well, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it's the great feast of St. Joseph, my birthday. Of course, those who follow me know I've been talking about this, my 72nd birthday. And, and St. Joseph, my patron saint of Father Stephen Joseph Imbarato. And it, it, it's interesting, you know, most people say that uh, from uh, the standpoint of looks, I take after my father. My father, God rest his soul, died uh, quite young, about the age of uh, 55 in 1984. Uh, and my father had this quiet strength. He had this quiet virtue. And uh, I by no means uh, have any quiet virtue. Right? Not to say I'm not virtuous. Uh, I surely lack many, many virtues. But I'm surely not quiet, never been quiet. And... Uh, uh, and I don't think anybody would accuse me of being quiet. Uh, and, and my father all right, was, you know, really more like St. Joseph. And it's interesting that I'm named Stephen Joseph, and uh, I'm, I'm more like St. Stephen, who was stoned to death because of his, his, his bold preaching, right, because of his mouth. His, his, virtue, his virtue was quite evident, but it was not the same virtues as St. Joseph. Uh, and, uh, you know, Joseph's quiet strength, his quiet virtue is most evident in his obedience, right? In his obedience. He really had the obedience of Abraham, right? We hear that Abraham was righteous. And when we hear the word righteous, as a matter of fact, it was credited to Abraham because he had faith through righteousness. And that's why our Christian brothers and sisters who say we're saved by faith alone. Forget this little passage in Romans where, where, where Paul says Abraham was, uh, had faith through righteousness. Righteousness was through obedience, doing the right things, right? Uh, that's what righteousness is. And, uh, and uh, indeed, uh, Abraham was the father of us all, right? The, 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 uh, the the, the heritage, the lineage of Abraham through David, through Joseph, right? And then down to us. And so, my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we meditate on Joseph today, uh, let us not be silent in our faith, but indeed silent in our obedience. And when I, when I, when I say that, I mean... Uh, that we want to uh, cry out to God. We want to cry out to our Lord in prayer, right? Uh, we, we should not be silent in our faith. We want to beg our Lord. Uh, the church uh, needs our, our cry for mercy. Uh, but in terms of how we exhibit our faith, uh, we should be really silent, but people should know that our faithfulness, uh, know our faithfulness through our righteousness, through our desire to be obedient, 
and obedient to all that Jesus taught. This is uh, exemplified uh, by uh, uh, Joseph, but also by our Lord, who was obedient even unto death, death on the cross. Now, you may think that Jesus was being disobedient by staying behind in the temple, right? Um, I, I, I meditated on this, this whole thing, right, that how much independence Jesus must have been given at the age of 12 for, uh, for Mary and Joseph to just assume that he was in the caravan, right? Uh, that, in other words, you know, there was no questioning, right? All right, the caravan is leaving. Let's make sure Jesus is with us. No, the caravan's leaving. Jesus is in the caravan somewhere, right? Uh, and, I, and I dare say that, you know, Jesus did not commit any sin. We know he didn't commit any sin. He was incapable of committing sin. Uh, so, in, indeed, there must have been some mix-up, some mixed signals, some misunderstanding uh, for Jesus to stay behind. Maybe he was just enthralled. Now, three days is a long time, though, right? Uh, I think that this whole issue is something that, if uh, uh, given an opportunity, uh, may be on my question list for Jesus when I see him face to face. Uh, maybe it'll be of no importance at that point in time, but uh, surely it's one of the questions that I have. But the scripture passage ends with something very, very important. That Jesus went down to Nazareth and was obedient to them. In another passage, it's, he grew in, in wisdom and was obedient to them. And, you know, where did Jesus gain that wisdom, that sense of obedience? From the Blessed Mother, but of course from St. Joseph, right? The the quiet strength of St. Joseph. Uh, and Jesus really did not speak any more than he had to in his public ministry. It was his actions that manifested his faith. And so on this day that we honor St. Joseph, we're blessed by St. Joseph's intercession. Uh, let us uh, be mindful of, of that. Do our actions exude righteousness? Do our actions exude obedience? Do our actions really uh, tell people uh, that indeed we're Christian, we're Catholic, uh, that we, we love Jesus? Today is a solemnity, so indeed we also pray the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. And through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now I ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs for the Catholic Church, and the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study for the priesthood, for those discerning religious life, for mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, and everybody in their vocation, may desire to do all things in humble obedience for the praise, honor, and glory of God, in atonement and reparation for our sins, and charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear us. The peace in the world, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, the conversion of the world, the conversion of nations and political leaders especially Catholic political leaders to defy their faith, conversions necessary 
within the hierarchy of the church, within our families, our own daily personal conversions. For anyone who we wounded or led astray in our lives, for anyone who's wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone. For the end of all the vicious attacks against life, marriage, and family, and for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, that they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. And for the particular intentions of this Mass, my intentions on my birthday, uh, for the repose of the soul of Archbishop Michael Sheehan, the repose of the soul of my son, for all my personal intentions, the intentions of all those watching this Mass, our personal intentions, family intentions, health intentions, ministerial intentions, vocational intentions, the intentions of all those who we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, and for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day, for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members, and our loved ones and family members who are away from the church that they may embrace Christ's sacraments of mercy we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. We ask for this. We ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, the angels, martyrs, and saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands, become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, I receive the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted, to God, the Almighty Father. Pray, O Lord, that just as St. Joseph served with loving care, your only begotten Son, born of the Virgin Mary, so may we be worthy to minister with a pure heart at your altar through Christ our Lord. Dominos Rabiscum, Sorsum Corda, Gracias Agimus Domino Deo Nostro. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for on the solemnity of St. Joseph to give you fitting praise to glorify you and to bless you. Uh, for this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household to watch like a father over your only begotten son who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praises we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy.
To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together with your servant Francis, our Pope John, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here is faith and devotion known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise for the offer of themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living in truth. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ and St. Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos, and Damien, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Studium Fide. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension to heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to you glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as one true, pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask, O Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar Receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace to us. Also, your servants who are those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, 
Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but grant your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, with him, and in him, O God. And in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace and grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and union in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Pax Domino sit semper fabiscum, on your stay. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Well done, good and faithful servant. Come share your master's joy. Body of Christ. Amen. Amos. Defend with unfailing protection, O Lord, we pray, the family who have nourished the food from, with food from this altar, 
as they rejoice at the solemnity of St. Joseph and graciously keep safe your gifts among them through Christ our Lord. Dominos Rubiscum Benedica Vos Omnipotens Deus Pater Filius Spiritus Sanctus Ita Misa S. St. Michael the Archangel defend us in battle be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, a Prince and a Heavenly Host, by the power of God, yes. cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin the souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praise as we say, you reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Thank you for joining us today, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Now, I may be, well, we're definitely going to do at least one rosary today. So I'm making a couple of stops this morning. I'm going to go to an abortion mill. We're going to go to a jail where pro-lifers are incarcerated. So uh, I'm going to do my live. It may be me saying a few words, but we're going to do the rosary together, at least in one of those places, if not both places. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. Share this video. One share per group. One share per page. And invite your family and friends to join us each and every single day in protestchildkilling.com, protestchildkilling.com. There you can access rallyforpersonhood.com. You can access my Rumble and YouTube channels. Please subscribe. Go out into the world today, my friends, and give them heaven.